Eat Well, Travel Often is sponsored by Linda's Artistic Adventures, which specializes in unique off-the-beaten-track destinations worldwide. They provide impeccable service, a sharp attention to detail, and first-hand knowledge of all the places you want to go and those that you don't know about yet. Some people think that travel agents are a relic of the past, that booking online themselves is a good enough way to plan a vacation. But that takes a lot of time, and it's hard to know about all the best places to eat and stay and things to do. That's where the travel pros at Linda's Artistic Adventures come in. They'll help you book your once-in-a-lifetime experience. To get started on your dream vacation plans, email Linda at info at lindasartisticadventures.com and make sure to mention the Eat Well, Travel Often podcast for a special gift when you book. Welcome to Eat Well, Travel Often, a podcast about the intersection of food, travel, the environment, the mind, body, and spirit. I'm Melissa Goldberg. Food is the lens through which I look at life, where it comes from, how it's cooked, its origin. Food creates a community, and how we connect with each other through food is an expression of who we are. I hope to share with you my passion for food from everything from book to plate. Today, I'm talking with Joanna Saltz, editorial director of House Beautiful and Delish. Joe and I are kindred spirits. We are both Jersey girls who love to cook food and beautiful homes. We both live not far from where we grew up, and our husbands are Jersey boys too. We even went to rival high schools. At House Beautiful, Joe is responsible for its print and digital content across all platforms. She relaunched housebeautiful.com in 2018, and her first print issue was in January of last year. Since 2015, Joe has been at Delish, where she relaunched the brand with a fresh editorial point of view geared toward food lovers, not food elitists. Delish even has a quarterly print version. Prior to Delish, Joe was the executive editor at Food Network magazine. Recently, she published her second book, Delish, Insane Sweets, Bake Yourself a Little Crazy, 100 plus cookies, bars, bites, and treats. As with all my episodes, after the interview is what I call the book to plate segment, where I talk about my personal experience of something I travel to or food related. In this episode, my son and I try out the best chocolate chip cookie recipe from Delish Insane Sweets, but we do it two ways, one batch with salted butter and the other with unsalted butter. Here, which one he liked better. Also, just a heads up, I only had one microphone for my interview with Joe, My husband took the other one to Las Vegas to use for his podcast, The Green Rush. So you will hear Joe and I passing the microphone back and forth. I hope you enjoy this episode. So decorating and food, that's a really interesting combination. Can you tell me how you got into the world of food and how design plays a role in cooking? Well, I sort of fell into food accidentally. I always loved to cook. I was someone who, you know, watched Food Network from the very, very beginning. Like Two Hot Tamales, like all of those like super old shows, David Rosengarten. Um, But so I I loved cooking just on a personal level. Um, But when I was, you know, I was in magazines for a long time. I had worked at Seventeen as the executive editor. I was overseeing like lifestyle content there. Um, and then there was an opportunity that opened up within our company to work at Food Network Magazine. And I felt like that was my opportunity to really get more into the universe of food while also merging my knowledge of pop culture that I had developed at 17. So I sort of fell into food in that way. What I loved about sort of Food Network was that they had made food approachable for the rest of us, right? They had found ways for anyone to feel like they could be a part of the food universe. Um, when I started Delish four and a half years ago, that was really the MO was making food approachable and making it for people who didn't fancy themselves chefs. And when I took over House Beautiful in the last year, I sort of wanted that same approach, right? That House Beautiful is this age old brand that's been around for a really long time, 
but everybody wants a beautiful home and everybody should be allowed to have that. So how can I apply the tent poles of Growing Delish and what we knew about food to design? So to be honest with you, the two are much more related than I think a lot of people would want to admit. We Everybody loves to eat and everybody lives wants to live in a comfortable, beautiful space. Um, and so the two are very closely related and constantly informing each other. So do you love to cook or do you just love, do you have a passion to eat? Like, do you like, like being in the kitchen and cooking or is it just the visuals and the background and designing? And, um, that's a really good question. And a lot of people ask me, um, I like to cook. I think I like to pretend like I cook more than I do because by the time I get home from work, I am too tired. Um, But actually, my passion is in baking. And that's why, you know, this delish Insane Sweets book that we just came out with, like this felt like a real baby for me because I just cookies are like my jam. I love to make cakes for my kids birthdays. I love to make cupcakes for the class parties. Um, I also really do love to eat. And that's also a big tentpole of Delish is really, it's less about the hard process and more about the bringing people together and destroying something together. Like that was sort of the, the whole shtick. So on Delish, there's a lot of food editing. So can you tell me how you got into food editing and, and what's behind that? And I mean, there's a whole style with that. And, and, and can you tell us how the normal person can get into making these beautiful videos. I love watching these videos because I they're easy to cook from and and you get the idea of what you're doing. Well, to be, I I think it's, I have to start by saying like it takes a village for sure at Delish and. You know, you know, I always say that like the people who work there are sort of like power rangers, like they each have a really extraordinary gift that they bring to the table. But without each other, like the the full team couldn't function if any one of us is missing. So um, I only say that because no one person at the team can do all of the things. Um, We have an extraordinary recipe development team who is constantly testing and creating recipes. And that's a really, I wouldn't say a difficult process, but it definitely requires patience and science and the ability to like swallow your mistakes down. (laughs) Um, And then I have an extraordinary video shooting team who has crafted the look of the videos that you've talked about, which are honestly how we communicate with our audience you know we always said the food had to look super delicious it has to be beautifully lit Um, and then I have amazing um, video editors who know to understand the pace understand the organization understand the arc and those three pieces coming together create this thing The thing I'd say about getting into it is there are so many freelance opportunities right now in media and food media because there are so many new food media brands growing and being developed across the country. I I happen to work in Manhattan, but, you know, Portland, Austin, um, you know, L.A., Chicago, there's so much opportunity. And I would say the only way to get real experience is to just get out there and start doing some of the work. The, what's fantastic about right now is media is constantly changing. The platforms that come out every month are you know different and are different and new to even us who have been in the industry for a long time. So there's almost no such thing as not having exactly the right experience. The things I'm doing now, I wasn't doing a year ago. I definitely wasn't doing five years ago. So everybody has a learning curve. So you just have to get out there and, and try. So what makes Delish videos different than other media platforms? Like, how, how do you distinguish, distinguish yourself from, from the other things that are out there? Um, for us, Delish was, we always said, come for the food, stay for the fun. So it was less about being super precious and perfection and more about making creating a space that felt really welcoming and comfortable so what we did when we started creating videos was we used these sort of like tricks 
to draw people in. We used super fun music. It didn't feel formal or stuffy. We used, we have like, we end our videos with like funny little puns because we want there to be some level of humor. Um, you know, in some cases we leave in a little of mistakes where you see us like making a little bit of a mess. Maybe some of the liquid comes outside the bowl. Like all of these like tiny little touchstones make it seem like you could do it too. I always said that, you know, when we first started Delish, we had a social media editor who hated, who she really was bad at cooking. She's like, her McDonald's was her jam. And I always sort of used her as our guide to like, if we could create something that felt so relaxed and so easy to do that even she felt compelled to try it at home, I knew that that was a win. So for me, what makes Delish different is the approach that you can do it, like just work with us and we'll make it easy for you. So do you develop all your own recipes or do you tweak recipes from other chefs and cookbooks? I mean, we've worked with chefs over the past few years, but to be honest with you, I really didn't want this to be a chef-centered space. I wanted it to be much more for the home cook. We develop all of our own recipes. Um, in some cases, they're informed by, you know, if we know something that's trending or doing well or... Um, you know, that we think is like happening in the ether, we'll do our own take on it and give like a nod to the, to the person who created it. Um, but we have like an obsessive test kitchen team that are, um, really honed in on making a perfect dot, dot, dot. Um, it actually got so crazy that last year we started doing, um, to be honest with you, for, for the Insane Sweets cookbook, um, we didn't have a really good chocolate chip cookie recipe. Like I felt like for some reason, the delicious chocolate chip cookie recipe was like kind of fine. It was like maybe a little bit Toll Housey, which by the way, I love a Toll House cookie, don't get me wrong. Um, and so I said to the test kitchen, I said to our four editors, um, we need a better chocolate chip cookie. And so the four of them were like, well, I think it should be chewy. Well, I think it should be da da da. Well, I think it should be thin. I like it crispy. And everybody has an opinion about chocolate chip cookies. And so actually what we ended up doing was I was like, you four make your, what you think is your perfect chocolate chip cookie. And then we'll do a test and then we'll open it up to our audience and see what they think. And whichever one wins is the one that ends up in the cookbook. So actually the chocolate chip cookie that ended up in the cookbook, um, is, I, I can't remember whose it is, I think it might be Lena's, but it was a huge, like they were, this was serious business. Like one of them was, was gluten-free, um, you know, another one was like thick, like, they take this stuff, like they take such ownership over these recipes and they really want them to reflect sort of what the mission of Delish is. I wanna come cook there, it sounds like so much fun. Um, in terms of like behind the camera, is there like funny stories? How how long does it take to make these videos? Like what happens behind the scene? I mean, I would think, you know, in my kitchen, things fall, things change, you know, and it takes a while. Lots of things happen behind the scenes. Um, I would say that like, I, I would say like the biggest, the funniest stories always happen when we are like trying to get a lot, like we produce content at an extraordinary rate. Um, there are some days where we're shooting like six recipe videos in a day. So, I mean, at, at our highest pace, we were putting out like 40 to 50 recipe videos a week. Like it's crazy the amount of the scale. Um, so the mistakes start to happen when you've like put something on something that maybe hasn't cooled quite yet or like, oh, that like that cake's not totally cool and we put the icing on it and it's hard to fall off. Or we have like, we've had stories of like when we put something in the freezer, we, we, when we first started at Delish, we had a busted freezer. We, we ended up inheriting a, um, a kitchen that used to be part of the good housekeeping test kitchen at Hearst that they weren't using. So we inherited this kitchen and little did we know that the freezer did not work for like the first two years. And so we had a million stories of like, the ice cream sandwiches are not freezing or like the ice cream cake we made has like now slid off into the something, something like it was, those are the kinds of disasters that we have definitely, but also sometimes they're like funny to talk about too. When we write about the recipes that we're putting up online, like we are like, Hey, listen, note to self, this is what happened when we did this. Don't make the same mistake. So when you watch the crazy, cooking shows they like say like a chop thing they use all this crazy equipment yeah. 
do you guys shortcut and use those like the deep freeze the the like put it in the free deep freezer or use the ice cream machine because that's not how we cook at home no we are we're very adverse to using anything that our home cook wouldn't have we don't have a deep freezer we don't have we actually don't have a sous vide machine like we don't have those kinds of things um that said I mean I think we'd love to I think we'd love to have some of that stuff as much as I like to be a purist um I, you know for a really long time I was reticent to do anything but a no churn ice cream recipe on delish um, you know, there's a great hack of like, you know, condensed milk and heavy cream and, and whatever, whatever, and you whip those things together with, with some vanilla and you can have like delicious ice cream and you just put it in a loaf pan and scoop it. So we were really doing these like great no churns because I was really like, no one has an ice cream maker. Like nobody does. Please don't use an ice cream maker. Fast forward like two and a half years in, I started to feel like, well, if we can make an ice cream maker seem approachable and easy, like if, if we can, we shouldn't be afraid of hard things. What we should focus on is how do we make hard things seem easier or what do we need to teach people to make these things seem more approachable? And so that really became the thing. Like how can we, like we have a fantastic video series on YouTube right now that stars June, who's our extraordinary test kitchen um, assistant. And she is obsessive about um, process and also about doing things right. And so she's taking on a lot of these really complicated recipes like um, bouche de Noël or um, like really good pie crust, these kinds of things that are like constantly difficult for people, but she's taking you slowly through the process and being really helpful and frankly friendly and welcoming so that even someone like you might be able to, not you specifically, but someone like anyone off the street would be able to make it happen. So. You have this new cookbook out called Delish Insane Sweets. Um, tell me about it. Um, I would say that our, um, our sort of, a lot of what we were built on, our foundation was built on crazy sweets. And so, you know, last year we came out with a cookbook that was just sort of our, what we called our Bible, which was eat like every day's the weekend. And it was filled with everything, dinners and whatnot. And so for our second book, we really decided that sweets was going to have to be the focus. We just have so many of them and we just have so much fun. Like desserts are really our sweet spot. I told you I have a soft spot for them as well. Um, what I love about Insane Sweets is that so much of the stuff in there is such an unusual approach to stuff that you would normally, like things you wouldn't normally see. S'mores stuffed cookies and like, you know, amazing cheesecake bars, not just cheesecake, but like easier ways to sort of like create more complicated ideas. Um, we also have like boozy, we have like a whole boozy sweets chapter. So we have a bunch of like cupcakes that have booze in them. And um, to that end, I just felt like we wanted to sort of turn your normal baking cookbook on its head a little bit. Um, what I like about it too is that like there's something in it for sort of everybody. There's gluten-free ideas in there. There's, um, you know, there's definitely like more diet-friendly stuff. There's definitely, well, I can't say diet-friendly. That's definitely, I don't know if that that's necessarily true, but there is something in there for like super chocoholics, for people who love nuts, for people who don't like nuts. Um, there's something in there for everyone. So the book is drool worthy, like the pictures you, you die for. Um, how did you decide which ones to put in? Did you have to taste them all? Did you personally taste them all? Um, I will admit that I'm on a diet right now because yes, I generally do taste everything and I couldn't do it anymore. Um, we have a running joke at the office that like at, literally at four o'clock or three o'clock every single day um, that food comes down from the test kitchen. Um, but I will say that it is a hard thing to choose the recipes for this cookbook, like, and all of our cookbooks. You always feel like, like you're losing a little bit of yourself by having to take something out. Um, in fact, we're working on our next cookbook right now, which is about cocktails. And we're sort of in the, we're right now in the middle of that exact process of just like, what are we taking out? What are we, what aren't we putting in here? Um, 
I think what's nice about the selection is, as I said, there is something for everyone, but also there's something for every level, which is something that we think about too. As much as I like to be easy, I also think that like, frankly, when you're making a special dessert for somebody, if you're making it for the holidays or if you're making it for someone's birthday, you might be willing to put in a little bit more effort. And so I didn't want everything to just be like no bake or you know super easy. I wanted there to be something in there for people who were like ready for a little bit of a project. So today, sugar is kind of demonized. Um, Are there any tricks in the book of that? Or is it kind of like, you know what, screw it. We're just going to have a cookie and we're going to love it. And it's a fun thing to make and eat. Um, Yes, you're right about sugar. Um, You know, the the subline to the book is bake yourself a little crazy. And I do feel like we are also in a place right now where like we all need a little bit of a break from the madness of that is the world. And if you can't find that respite in your kitchen, if you can't find it in food, then where can you find it? Um, I definitely I love to say everything in moderation, but I do not abide by that in my own personal life. I'm definitely do as I say, not as I do. Um, But to that end, I do think it's like, listen, there's always time for something special. And if you can't treat yourself even once a month, um, what's the point? The other thing I love about this book, too, is that it's like it's the perfect gift for somebody. So even if you're not making these things like people there's people have such a passion for baking um that I think that like you'll just enjoy looking at the pictures sort of to your point like it it's sort of like it's like dessert porn you know what I mean I also think I mean I I bake with my kids and I think it's a great book to bake with kids because they could just go through and they're going to love everything and they can learn all the techniques and then it can apply into later in their life um do you have a favorite recipe in the book? Oh, gosh. Um, I mean, I got to say the cover recipe, the S'more Stuff Cookies, is definitely one of my favorites. Um, I mean, I I think a lot of our cupcakes are really cute and fun. And as I was saying, like, we have boozy ones. We have these, like, um, like mimosa cupcakes that are in there that are really, like, sort of, like, fun for a girl's night. Um, we have also, like, fun um holiday things in there I'm trying to think exactly what are my favorites the truth of the matter is like I like I can remember the moment when we came up with almost every single recipe in there like I can I remember the meetings that we had and so they all sort of feel a little bit like they're definitely not mine to take ownership over but they do feel like they're part of my family so picking a favorite is always really really challenging but I'm also like a bar girl like I love the bars chapter like I love the ease of like blondies of brownies and I I think our brownie recipe is killer and that's in there too so I, you know, for, for me, like a go-to dessert to bring to a party or bring to a friend's or bring to a swap is like a bar because I just feel like there's nothing easier than just like making a sheet. So we're both Jersey girls. Um, anything special that you can point out about food in New Jersey and what people should understand about eating in New Jersey or things in New Jersey? Oh, God, that's a really hard question. I mean, I, yeah, like, I've, I'm not only born and raised, but, like, went to college in New Jersey. Like, I have never left this state. Like, I'm a Jersey girl. Um, I met my husband at College of New Jersey. Um, he's also born and raised. Um, the closest we've ever gotten to moving outside of New Jersey is Jersey City, which is, like, we could see Manhattan. Um, but... Eating in New Jersey, I got to say, like, we have awesome restaurants here. And I've had the privilege of getting to live in towns. I mean, I lived in Milburn. You know, as I said, I live in Jersey City. Um, You know, we were always going to Maplewood. I grew up really close to Montclair, where there are such great restaurants there. Um, You know, when I was living in Jersey City, I stumbled upon... um, the cake bosses, like before he was the cake boss, like he worked with me at, um, when I worked at a bridal magazine and like, but his bakery was like a, like was like a major player in, in Hoboken before he was famous. So I just feel like there are so many magical little places to discover, um, that you don't have to go to the city. You don't have to go to Philly. You don't have to, you know, like we have such fantastic food here that I, I wish I, I have three kids. I wish I got the opportunity to eat out more. Um, I will say hot take, like I think New Jersey pizza, 
ha- is like outdoes New York City by a lot. And I know some I'll get a lot of hate mail for that, but um, specifically, like I love Paisanos and Wachong, and I'll just say it's worth the trip there. Um, I think we have great pizza. I'm obsessed with Jersey pizza. Yeah, I I love the pizza here. I used to live in Boston, and I'd come home for pizza or a bagel. Like the bagels in New Jersey are great. Um, so, but now I would assume with Delish and House Beautiful, you travel a lot. Do you have a favorite city or some place that you can say where you just love the food? Oh gosh, um, I do travel a lot. I'm embarrassed to say that because of House Beautiful, I just took my first trip to Paris, which is you know a sin at this state of stage of my life. Um, and I loved the food there, but I've had the extraordinary pl- privilege of being able to go to a lot of different places. Most recently, I just came back from Nashville, and the food in Nashville was beyond it's like truly I think one of the best food cities in the country right now um I've also I mean everybody's talking about Austin also like Austin food is great um but but I do feel like Nashville is really really a happening food scene um I have to go to Charleston in a few months and I'm really excited about that I haven't been in a really really long time and I hear the food's supposed to be fantastic everybody who's coming back from there is saying it's so good but I mean the sad fact is when I do travel I usually have like my head down and I'm like powering through a bunch of meetings. So it's not like I'm like wistfully wandering around the city. But I mean, obviously Paris is so extraordinary. I still think Rome is like one of the best food cities on the planet. Um, But I'm saying like Nashville. Nashville also from New Jersey is like a two hour flight. It's the easiest thing from Newark. And like it's so worth it. Even like a 36 hour trip is so worth it. Do you remember any of the places you ate there or? I mean, I loved Biscuit Love. I know that's also like a little bit, um, but oh gosh, I wish I had, I wish I had more names. I'll, I'll come back to you with that. I wish I had more names because again, it's me just being dragged around to go eat at different places. Um, but you can't go wrong there. I mean, that was the problem too, was when we were setting up to go travel there for our, for our trips, we would ask locals like, where should we eat? And literally everyone would be like you can't get a bad meal in this city it doesn't even matter if it's this it's the like hole in the wall like down the street or like the fancy restaurant everybody's talking about like there is no bad food in nashville so since food and travel is my passion um does delish have any plans to do travel segments or food segments traveling you know, we already kind of do it in a few different ways. Well, one, we just launched Delish UK. So we have a London outpost now, which has been really amazing. Um, we also have a great food se- uh, a YouTube series right now called Iconic Eats, where our, our editor, Tess Komen, who grew up in Charlotte Hills, like right here, um, she goes to amusement parks and big um, and places like that across the country and then finds the best food there. She just came back from... Dollywood. She goes to Disney all the time. She goes to Knott's Berry Farm um, and eats her way through that. So that to me is really fun. And speaking of like kids and eating like and food, like that's a, like so, so great for them. Um, we have started a little bit of like city guides of like the best places to eat, but that's been such a heavily treaded area that we're trying to find new and interesting ways to sort of cover it, surprising ways. Um, we started a, a series about, which I feel like you'll appreciate, a series of um, like booze tours. Like a lot of these like wine trains and like tequila trains are opening up across the con- the globe, frankly. And so we've been covering a lot of that, of like beer trains and um, those kinds of places. Like traveling for the experience of getting to like eat and drink so the next will be your cannabis bus <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so well thank you so much is there anything else you'd like to tell us about delish or the publication or the new book i just think that like i just want people to get out there and try like don't be afraid delish is you know we're there to support you we're there on every platform follow us on instagram you know subscribe to our youtube page but also just like like i feel like if we can get people involved in the kitchen we sort of have done our part um it's not even just about delish it's about just like enjoying food and being a part of that experience and then bringing people into that experience whether it's with delish or not Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thanks.
And now we are at the Book to Play segment of Eat Well, Travel Often podcast. Here, I report back to you my personal experience. It could be a cookbook I cook from, a restaurant I ate at, even a place I recently visited. If you have any suggestions, please reach out to me. After Joanna Saltz and I taped this segment, we did a book signing event at my local bookstore, The Book House. One of the attendees, actually my friend Barry, was looking through the book and noticed that the recipes did not call out for salt or unsalted butter. If you notice, in most baking books, they usually use salt, unsalted butter, so you can adjust the salt to your liking. I usually use whatever I have. Joe said that you really are supposed to use unsalted, but she also grabs what she has in the fridge. My son had been asking to make chocolate chip cookies, and after hearing Joe rave about the best ever chocolate chip cookie recipe in Delish Insane Sweets, I suggested to him that we use the recipe, but I wanted to do it two ways, with salted butter and unsalted butter. The recipe was really easy to follow, and I have never seen a chocolate chip cookie recipe that you use melted butter. Usually it's softened butter, but melted was way easier. I'm going to let him tell you about the results. The recipe called for cinnamon, and my family and I are not big fans of cinnamon in our chocolate chip cookies. The batch with the salted butter really brought out the cinnamon. I personally like the unsalted butter batch. All of the cookies were crisp on the outside and chewy on the inside with chocolate in every bite. While I prefer the unsalted butter, they were both great. A special thanks to Joanna for taking the time to speak with me. If you want to find out more about Joanna, you can go to eatwelltraveloffit.net where you can find show notes, recipes, travel tips, and more. If you would like to reach me, you can email me at melissa at eatwelltraveloffit.net or find me on social media. I'd love to hear all your comments and recommendations. And thank you for listening. And as always, eat well and travel often.